So if you struggle with chronic illnesses, there's probably one thing that you absolutely dread, and that is a chronic illness flare up. You know, when all of a sudden your body's like, boom, I'm just gonna get worse for no reason and make everything awful for who knows how long. Well, that's what we're gonna be talking about here in today's video, what to do when a chronic illness flare up shows up and decides to ruin your life. Like how do you start healing from that? What do you do? Anyway, if you wanna learn more about that, then definitely stay tuned for today's video. My name is Ellie Dashwood, and this is my channel where we thrive together and live our best lives. If you like either of those things, then definitely subscribe. So I'm pretty open about all of the chronic illnesses that I have, I have a little video on it, but I know that this is something a lot of you in our community struggle with. I recently asked you on an Instagram Q&A, if you could change something about your life, what would it be? And so many of you responded with your illnesses or your health, and I totally get you. Like, I feel the same way. In fact, I've been having a flare up of my chronic illnesses in the past few weeks. I'm doing a bit better now. Clearly, I'm sitting in front of a camera, but it is no fun. So, I thought today I would share some tips that I personally use when having an illness flare up. And these are more like mindset idea, general lifestyle ideas, because of course, every single chronic illness is different. Every individual is different. So I try to keep these things to ideas that could help anyone and everyone. First an important reminder though, I'm definitely not a healthcare professional in any way, shape or form. And this is not healthcare advice. I don't really know what I'm talking about. Let's all be honest here. I'm just a girl with chronic illnesses that are, I'm sharing my own personal experience and what I have found helpful, but definitely consult with your personal healthcare physician to see what you need to do in your circumstances. There are seven tips, so let's get into number one. So number one is show yourself love and remember that the flare up is not your fault. It's the illness's fault. I'm definitely someone who when a flare up starts, I start blaming myself. I start asking like, okay, what did I do? What did I not do that caused this? And I can think like, wow, like I failed, like I was taking really good care of my health, but clearly I messed up somewhere. But while sometimes we make dumb decisions, like everyone makes dumb decisions, but they don't have these chronic illnesses right there on them to jump on them <laughs> when it happens. And honestly, a lot of times chronic illness flares because it feels like it, because of the weather, because of things completely and totally out of our control. So instead of having a flare and thinking like, oh, like, I have failed at taking care of my health or this is all my fault. Just remember to show yourself love because you're going through a hard time and this is not your fault. Ultimately, this is the illness's fault. Number two tip is give yourself grace and the time to rest. Resting is so important. It's vital medicine. That's how our bodies can heal and get better. But of course, I feel like at least in <laughs> American culture, we kind of have this go, 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 be productive atmosphere that does not exactly, you know, make you feel great about resting. It makes you feel like, oh, I'm just over here being lazy. But no, like rest is medicine. Appreciate it. Now, of course, while you're resting, it can get a little bit boring if you're just laying there. So I like to have activities that make me still feel productive, but don't aggravate my symptoms or make me worse while I rest. So for example, crocheting, drawing, coloring, something I did this past flare up was actually redesign my website. I'm using Squarespace now, which I'm so excited about. It's so easy to design really beautiful and unique and custom websites with Squarespace. So I had a blast doing that. And this is totally not sponsored. I just literally spent hours and hours of my life in the past few weeks on Squarespace, but I will definitely be linking it to it for you guys down below. But speaking of Squarespace and websites, like I know some people with chronic illnesses that started a blog just because that was something that they could do while sitting on the couch, while laying in bed, you know, they could still connect and share and do something that they felt was productive while still getting that rest in. Number three tip is communicate. Be open with the fact that you have chronic illnesses and that they're flaring up right now with others. This is one of the reasons I let you guys know about my illnesses because when I'm not able to post, you guys are a lot more understanding because you know what, what's happening with me. This is the same thing with friends, family, work colleagues. Like when you are not able to show up, it can be like a huge hit on our self-esteem, I feel like, right? Like because we all wanna be the people, I feel like, who show up, who can do the thing, who can follow through on commitments. 
but chronic illness doesn't always let us do that. But I found at least that communicating what's going on and why we can't fulfill those commitments is so important and it really helps other people understand more. And honestly, if they don't understand, well, that's their problem. <laughs> they need like a course in empathy and human understanding. And sadly, you know, eventually they're probably gonna get that the hard way, but we can all just pray for them that it's not too hard. <laughs> However, during this past flare, I had family come through town and we were supposed to go hiking together and I was so excited, but I wasn't able to do it. However, what I was able to do was go out to dinner with them later at a sit down restaurant and then go back home and like have a good chat with them. And so by doing the things that I could do with them, I feel like that still showed them how much I love them, right? Versus even though I wasn't able to go hiking. Tip number four is take care of yourself in little ways, whether that's taking a shower, washing your hair when you feel up for it. Like, you know, sometimes during a flare, you can't even get in the shower. That's like way too much to ask. But for example, if you're gonna lay in bed all day, put on your cutest pajamas. So at least you're in cute pajamas while laying in bed. And I've discovered that when I do little things for myself, even when I'm having a chronic illness flare, it like signals to my brain like, hey, you know what? You're still worth taking care of and I still love you, even though you're going through a really hard time right now. The other thing I have spent years sort of learning is listening to my body and knowing when it needs complete rest and when I can push it a little bit. Sometimes what my body needs to get better is some time out in the sunshine. Sunshine has so many health benefits from vitamin D to infrared radiation. Meanwhile, Sometimes I just need a little bit of exercise. Like I spent 12 minutes yesterday walking on the treadmill, which I know is not very long, but it was just the right a little bit of pushing my body needed to start healing more. However, again, that was something I had to learn the hard way over the years of when to push a little bit and when to just completely rest. Tip number five is stay positive. Now, first of all, I wanna say that I feel like crying is incredibly therapeutic. Like if you're having a flare up and you feel like crying, like go for it. That is my general worldview there. However, our bodies and our minds are so interconnected that if we let ourselves stay trapped in a lot of negative emotions, I feel like that hinders the healing process. It slows it down. And so I always like to have my moment of crying and then try to refocus on more positive things. One major example of this is I have to remind myself that the flare-up is in fact going to end. I, in the early like bad stages of a flare-up, I can be like, this is it. This is my new life. It's always gonna be like this now. Even though it clearly hasn't, I did once have this kind of flare-up for six months. That was a long time, but even that eventually got better. And I think that's just good to remember to always have some hope there and remember like, you know, this is a rough time, but it is going to come to an end. Something else I would say is obviously, I feel like a lot of us chronic illness people love to watch movies and TV while we're resting. And I just try to keep it positive and, and really look for movies that take me to a place I'd like to be or really lift up my spirits. Yes, I am suggesting watching a six hour 1995 Pride and Prejudice because honestly, everyone needs to do that when feeling bad. But I do think that it can be very easy to maybe get stuck on TikTok, watching people rant about negative things all day. There's something especially depressing about TikTok short form content. I don't even know what it is. It's like the most depressing of all platforms in my experience. However, it's very easy to absorb that negativity. And when your body is trying to heal, the last thing it needs is a bunch of negativity. Tip number six goes along with the positivity thing, which is focus on your hope. And if you don't have a hope, try to find a hope, even if it's just something to look forward to, as in like, oh, I'm gonna go on vacation next year. Though I have to say that my hope comes from my religious beliefs. I definitely believe what it says there in Revelation 21, three and four, about how God's going to wipe out all tears and all pain, and we're all going to have perfect and amazing health. And I just look forward to that time so much. And in fact, when I'm feeling really bad, that's what I meditate on. Like I envision myself in that time when I have perfect health. And for some reason I was realizing like what I envision the most is like what I'm gonna wear. Like I have like 
all of these outfits picked out. You think I'd be like, I would do this and that if I have perfect health. No, apparently I'm just gonna wear outfits when I have perfect health. But by really envisioning it in detail, it keeps it very alive and real for me. And it reminds me of that scripture, I think it's in 2 Corinthians about how their current tribulations are momentary and light compared to the wonderful hope that God gives us. And so, you know, chronic illnesses, they're just temporary, at least in my opinion. Though I definitely know that not everybody has that same hope, at least religiously as I do, but I feel like there's so many other things we could find hope in, whether it's maybe you're just really looking forward to your vacation next year, or you maybe you hope that science will someday cure your incurable disease. I do have this strange dream that someday they're just gonna come out with a celiac disease cure because honestly, guys, I wish I could eat wheat so bad. <laughs> I miss pizza. Tip number seven is be patient. Healing takes time, recovering takes time, and you're worth that time. You're worth taking the time to get better. I know that it can be very easily to get stressed out. Like I tend to always have like, I have plans, I have dreams, I have things I have to do. I have to hurry up and get better. But like in my experience, at least that does not make me get better. <laughs> if anything, it stresses me out and makes it get worse. I definitely think health problems are kind of like watching a boiling pot. Like if you're just sitting there staring at it, like, are you better yet? Like it's never gonna boil. So I like to, again, focus on other things, do something like semi-productive, like work on my website or start a blog or whatever else. And just recognize that, yeah, this takes time, but I'm worth that time. And it will eventually get better when it gets better. So guys, those are my seven tips to remember to show yourself love, give yourself grace, take care of yourself, stay positive, focus on your hope and be patient. Ultimately, dealing with a chronic illness flare-up is not fun. It's not a great time, but just remember that your chronic illnesses do not define you. You are still an amazing and wonderful gift to mankind and no illness can take that away from you. So as always guys, keep being awesome because you're awesome. Bye.